What's up guys, how are you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. Um, today we're gonna be checking out the Sonoff, or S-O-N-Off uh, Wi-Fi Smart Switch. This is a little switch that is 802.11bgnn compatible, along with it will take AC line voltages that you hook up, has lugs in there, uh, that's anywhere from 50 to 250 volts, 50, 60 hertz systems, so that way it will work in either Europe or the US, as well as it will work up to 10 amps. What we're gonna be doing today is showing you how to hack into this and reload the firmware with your own custom Arduino firmware, and you can hook it up using MQTT to your home assistant system. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned, because it's coming up right here, right now, on MI Sperry. Okay guys, well welcome to the video here. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be checking out this Sonoff uh, little switchy thing here. They even have their own app. Now you can use this with just the firmware that comes installed. Maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do a video on that at some point. I don't know, but you can uh, use the firmware that's already installed. It works with an app on your phone and all that jazz. It integrates with Alexa and all these other things. But if you want to, it to work with your uh, home assistant, here's an easy, easy way to do it. So let's go ahead, let's get this thing open. Here we go, all right. La, 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 la. Let's see what we got inside. All right, so let's see. Comes with some instructions of how to put this thing together. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, see? So it's gonna show you how to do this, yada, yada, yada. Now, who cares? Don't care, don't care. All right, here's the actual unit. Comes with these cool little little side door thingies that kind of clamp the stuff into place and then you get a little baggie of screws. So anyway, so you get all that junk. Well anyway, don't care. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing apart. Now, I, I love this when I first looked at it. It's got, it's got a little, a little no, don't, don't tamper. I thought that was funny. We're gonna rip that right out of there, don't care. All right, so this is all there is to it. Um, Pretty simple circuit here. Um, let's get that out of the way. I don't know if we can kind of zoom in a little bit. I got the macro lens on. All right. So super simple circuit. Um, looks like it's got you know, just some you know, transformer uh, pulling the voltage down. There's probably like a little full bridge rectifier somewhere. Probably if we look close enough, there's probably, yeah, there it is. It's right there on the side. So there's a little full bridge rectifier that's taking the AC and converting it down. So it creates us a little power supply that's even got a little mauve on it. Isn't that cute? Anyway, so it's got a little mauve on it. There's the relay. That's what's doing all the heavy lifting is this guy. It looks like it is a, what is that? Uh, Fawner? Fawner? Anyway, um, but there's, that's what's doing the heavy lifting is this guy right here. And like I said, you got the, uh, let's see, how's this oriented? You got input, you got output, and you know what I thought was funny is look at the, the actuator on that switch. Woohoo! Man, you could, you could probe space with that, that's amazing. Anyway, um, it looks like they got some pretty heavy traces. I like the big traces on the back of it. They've even uh, done solder over the top to improve the current carrying capacity of it. I like the isolation slots. That's always good. That's there for those of you that don't know. That's isolation slots. Those are for increasing creepage. It's what it's called whenever you have two high voltage uh, power lines next to each other on a PCB. You want you don't want them to be so easily shorted across. You know maybe through the FR four or through a dirty board or something. So you'll cut a slot in between them. However, it's kind of interesting. Um, oh, I had my finger over it. At first, I'm looking through the viewfinder, guys, so I couldn't see it. But see how it's cut all the way through? That increases uh, the amount of distance because it would have to arc, you know, it'd have to go all the way around that air gap, essentially. And they did some more isolation slots over here. So I had fairly well done. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, quite nice. But the main thing that I noticed was looky there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Focus! Do you see that? That's the chip that allows us to do the magic. So if you remember in one of my previous videos, I did some stuff on one of these guys. Well, hold on, if I can get it in the shot. One of these guys. Well, lo and behold, if you look at this guy up close, focus, focus. 
may have to bust out profanity. There we go. If you notice, it looks awfully similar. I don't know if you can see it. Man, it's hard to see. But those look awfully similar. And even look, look, there's a little wireless pattern. See that? That looks awfully similar. And that's right, it actually is exactly similar. It's actually an ESP8266 that is on board here. So, which means we can uh, reprogram it. And it actually comes with the correct bootloader and everything to reprogram. So we can reprogram this guy with uh, Arduino code. So to do that, it's actually fairly simple. You see this uh, set of holes right here? All you need is some header material which um, I have, you just need to get, I don't know, some of these little headers. This, this is one that I get, I get the, like the 40 pin ones. And then you just, oops, I didn't mean to hit the camera there. And then you just bust these off. And you just need uh, five, I think, really, which really you could do, get away with four. But you get some of their 10th inch spaced, you also get some 10th inch headers. And you just solder it into there. And that's gonna be your header that you will hook a like FTDI USB to serial uh, chip or something to. Like I've got one. Uh, the one that I program with is a USB uh, one, it's from Seed. So I've got, it's got the different pins broke out and then inside here is the FTDI uh, chip. So it even says FTDI 33 volt. Oh, and that's another thing. Make sure that it's 33 volt because just like the 8266 little guy like this, you can uh, blast the chip. I don't think they have, I don't know, I have to really look through the circuit. I don't think they have any kind of voltage protection on this little guy. So you can blast it if you hit it with five volts. So do not hit it with five volts. Hit it with a three, three volt, or um, if you don't have that, then um, get a little three, three volt uh, regulator and get that five volts down to three, three. So we're gonna go ahead and solder that onto here and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I've gone ahead and soldered on a little header. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up uh, my stuff. I will flash up real quick a uh, picture of where you need to place your pins and you'll do one for one on these. All right, so now my cable has this kind of a layout, orange, is transmit, receive is yellow, and then we've got black and red as our VCC and our ground. So when I look at my cable, let's get the right end. So this is what I'm going to do. I need the, I need the black. Okay, I do not need that one. I need the black, don't need the brown, but I do need the black, the red. So where's the red? The red, the orange, and the yellow. So these are the four that I need are these. So what we're gonna do is based on that, we've got the three, three volt is pin one, and then we got transmit, receive, and ground. So the three, three volt is first, so the red's first, then transmit, which is orange, so transmit, then yellow, and then the black. So I should be going together just like this. So red, orange, yellow, black, which is what this should take. So I'm gonna to try to plug that on there. So let's see if I can get it while looking through a viewfinder and through a camera and everything else. All right, so there we go. So now I've got her plugged in to my deal. So now let's jump over to the computer and we'll get to coding. All right, guys, so let's do the coding section now. Um, all the code for this can be checked out at my GitHub uh, repository down there in the link in the description. Check that out so you can download this for yourself and then it'll be simple to set up. All you need to do if you do go that route and download this is you just have to input your SSID, your Wi-Fi password, your MQTT server IP address, and your uh, MQTT uh, user name and your password for your... Uh, Raspberry Pi, basically. That's the one that uh, works for me. So whatever password you have for the Pi user, that's the password you'll type in. And that's pretty much it. Um, you've got your topic information and whatnot down here. Let's see, not exactly there, but uh, da, 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 I got to find it. Here we go. Here's your topic. So here's your uh, 
your different topics that you have. Um, so however you name it in your home assistant is how you need to make sure it is named in here. Otherwise the switch uh, won't work. So I just called my HA switch one. Now you may want to label them and be like, I don't know, like dining room lights or living room lights or, or whatever, however you want to label it. But you got to make sure that this matches the home assistant config, which we'll look at here in a minute. So once you get done with that, then all we have to do, pull up the bench here, is we've got it still connected. I've got it plugged in. All right. So um, what you got to do is like I've got a 3, 3 volt uh, uh, FTDI chip uh, guy. I think I showed it to you a little bit earlier. So what you have to do is as you power it up, you have to hold down the the little reset button all right so what i'm going to do is i'll well i'll do that in a minute let's set up the arduino uh ide so you need to go to tools come in here and you're going to choose the generic esp8266 module um, i have other videos on how to program esp 8266s so if you want uh to know how to get this you you know you go to your library manager and download it so it's pretty simple but you choose that and leave pretty much the default um you're gonna want the dio and you're gonna want the default one, which is I believe 512 and 64K uh, SPIFFS, all right? So that's what you're gonna wanna set up in this guy. So that way you can uh, put it together. You can select what COM port it's on, which mine is COM port three. So now we should be set up to uh, install our code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically, you can't see it, but I'm gonna unplug the USB and plug it back in. And when I do that, I'm gonna hold down the reset button. So this little this little button that's right here, you're gonna hold down that reset button while it comes up. So here we go. So I'm gonna hold down the reset, pull it out, hold down the reset, and I'm gonna put it right back in, if I can get it back in the slot. Then hold it for a few seconds and then let off and it puts it into bootloader mode. So let me move this up a little bit so you can see the messages. Now I should be able to upload my code. Now I'm going to pause the video for a second and I'm going to uh, fill out my information and then I'll be right back. Okay, now that we're here after the third uh, percentage, we get 100% and we get flush complete. It should be running now. Okay, guys, so now the next thing and final thing that we will do is we need to set up our configuration.yaml file. Um, I've got tons of videos on where this is and what it is. So if you don't know what it is, um, check out some of my other videos on Home Assistant. <coughs> And uh, anyway, what you need to add to your configuration file, I have in the link down below, there should be a link to the uh, repository. I think I mentioned that before, and it has a sample configuration file in there that you can add. Basically, it's this statement right here, this platform MQTT. Uh, all you need is this piece right there. Uh, it's all you need. Make sure, now the only thing that you have to make sure of is whatever the topic was that you put into your uh, Arduino uh, code, you need to make sure and match it here. There's the HA switch uh, that I used in that for the command and state topic. And that's pretty much it. So you just need to type this out. Again, there is a uh, sample version uh, there. You just put this in there, restart your home assistant, and you should be good to go so far as that goes. All right, guys, so once you get that all wired up, you basically have uh, your, your input coming in, your output. Again, I wanna stress that uh, you have to be very careful with this stuff. You are dealing with mains voltages, um, 120 volts AC, and even some of you guys that are over uh, overseas are dealing with uh, up to 250 volt, maybe 240 or whatever it is. Uh, be very careful, uh, wear protective devices, uh, wear hand and eye protection if you if you need to um, or seek out uh, professional help in installing this guy when and actually hooking it up to a mains voltage but be very careful so anyway once you got that hooked up and powered up like I do you should be able to come in to your home assistant and there's your MQTT off and on there we go so there's how we turn our deal off now I don't know if you can hear it clicking 
don't know if you can hear that. You may not be able to. But anyway, that is it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this in uh, rebuilding one of these guys. It was actually surprisingly simple when I did it. So um, anyway, check out, definitely check out the links down below, especially the forum links. The forum link that's down below, I created a forum for all of us. Um, you do have to sign up. I'm trying to, trying to make it where you don't have to sign up, but if you have a Google account, you can, you can sign up pretty easily. Um, and I will, as fast as I can, uh, prove it. I've got it on my phone. I haven't found a way for it to like auto approve. Ugh, it's frustrating to me. But anyway, um, check out the link down below because in fact, this is where this video came from. Uh, Jack, I uh, don't know if you're watching, but uh, definitely this is this, there's your video. So you guys, um, and ask me questions, ask uh, lots of questions because I'm hoping that we can build a community and then that way it's not just me answering questions. So check out that link down below. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, and all that jazz. Check me out on all the different social medias. And guys, with that, that ought to do it. We'll see you next time.